प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह बोलो गणेशाम महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे ठाकुर जी महाराज निजे सदगुरु देव की जय Our utmost dear our vala vala thakur ji maharaj pivda gansham maharaj our divine guru parampara muktanand swami adaran swami hari priya das ji swami vaikun charan das ji swami narayan swarup das ji swami nand kishor das ji swami our punja guru ji and all of you bhaktos jai swami narayan this is your course week 5 english sabha where today's theme is baksh baksh or we can say translated loyalty loyalty is a word that is used in society in many many different ways it is said uh and i'm sure most of you have heard of it that a dog is a man's best friend a dog is a man's best friend that is a saying that is used in society and that shows a form of loyalty which a dog has a virtue other animals other species also show some kind of loyalty but this one human species needs to be taught loyalty that's the only difference this human species loyalty is kind of like a frog what does a frog do at times it stays in the water and at other times it stays on the ground it doesn't have any kind of particular preference in the same way at times we have strong loyalty at other times we do not keep loyalty at all but today's katha is based from the vachanamrut and divine charitras that will explain to us what kind of paksh to keep how to keep paksh or loyalty and what are some scenarios that can determine how loyal you are so loyalty is something that is definitely needed because it's mentioned in the vachanamrut by bhagwan swami narayan himself bhagwan swami narayan him he was a very very practical god or when he came on this earth not only did he teach principles that can that one can understand to go to akshardham but also principles to live a successful happy efficient life on this earth as well and out of many many various topics this topic of paksh is something that is needed both in this you can say life in on this earth all the way up to akshardham that's why by the grace of thakur ji maharaj by the inspiration of our puja guru ji through these us of us we can understand how to mold our life where thakur ji maharaj our guru divine guru parampara our puja guru ji all the loyadam parivar bhaktos and santos and everyone would become pleased by our life that's why without further ado we would like to go 
and dive into the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine words, and see. So, as you can see, the U.S. Va outlined today. First, we would like to do Gadara, middle chapter 60, the loyal devotee of God. Move on to the reference of Gadara, middle chapter 61. Who shall be? Who shall we be loyal to? And then finally, Vachnamrut Gadara, last chapter seventh. Don't abandon your loyalty. Bhagwan Swami Narayan has said references about loyalty in many different ways and forms and Bhagwan Swami Narayan covers all the angles needed for a devotee to keep perfect loyalty for the Satsang Fellowship. So that's what we would like to observe. For number four, Swami Nivato, Sadguru Gunatitan Swami Nivato, Prakran Be, second chapter, 36 Vat, the best of all. And then finally, there is two charitras. Charitra one consists of Gunatitan Swami uh, and Jaguru Bharat's um, whole, uh, you can say, paksh that he kept. And Charitra two is uh, of a, a female devotee from Vishnagar. So we would like to take a look at all of these six aspects in some way to increase our level of paksh. So before we start, Let's determine in our mind, let's observe, let's see, let's see where we stand at how much bucks we have for satsang. Is it 5%, 10%, 15%, 50%, 80%? And from there, let's increase our level to become a kantik. That's the main goal. And without that, it would be very difficult for anyone to really get uh, insight on Bhagwan Swami Narayan's perspective of what he wants his devotees to be like. So without further ado, let's go into the Vachnamut Gadara, middle chapter 60th, as you can see here. In addition, in case a person feels, if I if I say something inappropriate, my own friends will condemn me. Now, this has to do with a little bit of public ridicule, uh, this Vat. So Bhagwan Swami Narayan again is taking into practicality regarding, um, you know, exactly how he wants his devotees to be, even in interaction with uh, friends, family, etc., so on and so forth. So continuing on, my own friends will condemn me and so to preserve my respect I listen as someone speaks ill of a devotee of God then he should also be known to be a non-believer even though he may be a satsangi therefore one should be absolutely loyal to a devotee of God just as one is loyal to one's relatives and one's mother and father so we're gonna look into the Vachnamrut Gadara middle chapter 60th Bhagwan Swami Narayan, as I mentioned before, is a very, very practical Bhagwan, and he teaches us how to live here on this earth perfectly, properly, along with how to live in his Akshardham properly. So Bhagwan states in this Vachnamrut, in addition, in case a person feels, if I say something inappropriate, my own friends will condemn me. And so to preserve my respect, I listen as someone speaks, someone speaks ill of a devotee of God. Then he should also be known to be a non-believer even though he may be a satsangi. So one thing is that we tend to get into the influence or uh, we tend to become more, um, you can say, subdued by our friends over satsang. And that's the issue. Sometimes we feel that, you know, uh, satsang is something that is that should be taken as a second or a secondary uh, life standard, not a primary life standard. And due to that, uh, our friends that we hang out with, that we have a good time with, that we, uh, you know, interact with, may it be academically or may it be uh, in any way. Uh, we tend to make them a primary source in our life and due to that when someone does spill, speak ill of satsang then what happens is that 
we take the side of our friend instead of a satsangi. How does Bhagwan believe that person to be? Bhagwan says that he is a non-believer, even though if he is a satsangi, even though if he is doing a tilak chamlo, even if he is doing, if he is wearing a kanti, even if he is doing the puja, but if he is able to listen to his friends speak ill of a devotee of God without saying anything, without reacting in any way, then that person is automatically a non-believer in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So as devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, we should think that I am not breaking this rule of Bhagwan, am I? I am not taking my friend's side over satsang side, am I? I am not, I am able to listen to my friends speak ill of someone, may it be in satsang, may it be about satsang or etc. so on and so forth, and still keep their friendship. Am I doing this? If so, then in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, you are a non-believer. Nonetheless, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says, Therefore one should be absolutely loyal to a devotee of God, just as one is loyal to one's relatives and one's mother and father. Now think about it. We live with our mother and father, our relatives, but our loyalty towards them is flawless. If someone was to come and rob us, point a gun at us then we would if, if they were to point a gun at our mother or father we would stand in front of our mother and father and tell the, the person to shoot us but not our mother and father because we have affection for them we have certain type of loyalty for them that's why we feel this way that's why we're, we are able to give our life to save their life but Bhagwan Swami Narayan says, take that exact loyalty and apply it for a devotee of God. A devotee of God, Bhagwan Swami Narayan is saying, is not only for householders, Bhagwan Swami Narayan is mentioning for everyone. May it be a Nikantik Satpurush, may it be Sadhus, may it be Parasads, may it be Sadaks, may it be Haribaktos, may it be male or females. Any devotee of God, any follower of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. That is the context Bhagwan Swami Narayan is talking about in this Vajnamut. Therefore, Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to become very, very pure and very, very focused. Focused on one goal, focused on one life which is all based off of spirituality. That doesn't mean that you have to forget your social life. That does not mean that you, don't, you do not have to live a social life. Do not misunderstand the message. But what Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to do is live a life that is centered around Bhagwan and do everything else. Sometimes what happens is that we make our uh, we make our social life the center of our life right here and then we have Bhagwan over here we have Mandir over here we have family over here so everything is based off of, off of our social life but instead of our social life being the center meaning our friends everything else put social life on the side and have Bhagwan meaning satsang become center and everything school family, friends, social life, everything else surround this one, very one focal point. And that's what Bhagwan Swami Narayan's aim is. Even after reading such kind of Vajshamdhuts, one is able to tell and see uh, that Bhagwan Swami Narayan's aim and wish is for that kind of particular uh, theme base. Moving on to the second Vajshamdhut, Kadira Middle Chapter 61. Bhagavan Swami Narayan says, One should be loyal to those Vaishnav devotees who worship one's Ishtadev, just as parents are loyal to their children, a son is loyal to his father, and a wife is loyal to her husband. Now Bhagavan Swami Narayan again is saying that those who are Vaishnav devotees, those who are devotees of God, and who worship one's Ishtadev, meaning Bhagavan, one should be loyal to them just as one is loyal 
to the children, father, wife, meaning family members. And as I mentioned before, we are able to do everything and anything for our family. But are we able to do everything and anything for Santo Bhakto? That's a question and question definitely to ask. Now you're probably asking that that you know um, we do do it, or if we do do it, then won't won't our family life become secondary? No. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is sta stating in another way where if someone speaks ill, if there is some kind of outburst, if there is some kind of attack on satsang, then take loyalty and bhaksha. It does not mean that you have to do it 24 hours. There is no environment that's like that in satsang, but at times there might be certain situations that arise and due to that, if one has done samagam or satsangam in ekantik satpurush, and if one knows that this ekantik satpurush is like this, then definitely one should take his side, and he, one should side with him, and leave everything else to the side. That is called baksh. And that is only measured in certain times. Baksh cannot be, me cannot be measured on a day-to-day -day basis. If you come to Mandir every day or every Saturday, come here, do Darshan of Bhagwan, listen to Katha, do a little Seva, one will not be able to tell if this person has Baksh or not, loyalty or not. But when certain kind of circumstances arise, when there is some kind of ill environment, negative environment in satsang, that is when one's baksh is measured. That is when one will be able to see how much baksh one has for Bhagwan, Ezekantik, Sat, Purush, Santo, and Bhakto. So, keeping that in mind, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is stating this that when certain kind of circumstances arise, arise keep baksh like you keep in your family. That's what he's saying. He's just giving an example making our minds think that you have bucks for your family in the same way keep bucks for satsang fellowship so this is the you can say the essence of this very statement and finally our last vachanamrut gadada last chapter 7th bhagwan swami Nathan states one should also remain loyal to the bhakta of god but in no way should one abandon one's loyalty to god and his bhakta even if while keeping that loyalty one's reputation increases or decreases or one is honored or insulted or one lives or dies. In addition, one should not allow an aversion to develop towards them. So again, Bhakta of God is the Ekantik Satpurush, Santo, Bhakto, may it be male devotees, female devotees, everyone is included here. So Bhagwan Swami Narayan is saying that no matter what happens, even if one's reputation increases or decreases. Now, this is very, very difficult to do. And this kind of, you can say, baksh is one of the highest type. Um, there's baksh where it can be mild, it can be medium, and it can be high. But when our reputation is on the line, suppose we have lived a whole life 40, 50, 60 years where we have built a very, very good reputation in society. We have good credit in society. Many, many people know us. Many people know us to be even a devotee of God. Not only that, but a very, very successful financial person. We have all those aspects. But when some kind of, in, you can say, environment, an ill environment, uh, a hazardous or radioactive environment is created a negative flow is created and when one has to keep baksh then one should not look that I am a very very credited person in society I have a good reputation what will people think of me if I take the side of this and leave everything else behind what will people know me as Will people remember me? If all these thoughts arise, then one will not be able to keep Baksh. So Bhagwan is saying, no matter how credited you are, no matter how 
you no matter how valuable of an asset you are in society when it comes to keeping loyalty or bhakshat bhagwan his ekantik satpurush santo and bhakto that should be hands down for example on one side if there is maharaj and guruji and on the other side if there is the world and if one had to keep the baksh of either you can keep the loyalty of the world or you can keep the loyalty of god in the ekantik satpurush then one has to think before making a decision that the ekantik satpurush and bhagwan want me to become ekantik they want me to attain the abode of god they are working and praying night and day in order for me to increase in spiritually that's one side and on the other side the world the world wants something from me the world is looking for some kind of selfish motive for me the world is always there but one day it remembers us and the second day it forgets us but the ekantik satpurush and bhagwan are always constantly there then automatically even if it's only one bhagwan and one satpurush one would be easily able to think and say i will take the side of this satpurush and bhagwan and attain at the authentic kalyan or ultimate liberation and go to bhagwan's divine abode instead of looking at the world one would be make, able to make that decision very very easily if one thinks in this manner but if one thinks about one's reputation one's credit one's value one's you can say ego in the society then in no way will one be able to take the baksh of satsang nonetheless if one is honored or insulted so in puja guruji's life he has been insulted more than he has been honored yet he keeps a very very strong firm upasana affection faith in god and puja dada guruji and our divine guru parampara sadguru shri muktanand swami all the way to dada guruji because he has their paksh he has loyalty he is loyal to them in no way may it be if this earth or this whole universe becomes reversed may it be everyone everyone becomes reversed their minds become different but our puja guruji's level of baksh is ultimate and is the best of all and that's what bhagwan swami narayan wants us to do as well we can we can just see from his example we do not have to go far and find a person who has loyalty for satsang our puja guruji is the best example and this is the way we can see or if one lives or dies the story of dayo in the village of of the village of superdi i'm sure all of you have heard of he died for satsang santos went at one time and gave him a, a kanti vratman tilak chandlo he started to chant bhagwan's name his father was a kusangi he did not want him to chant so he told him one or once or twice but this boy this little boy of age maybe 13 or 14 kept chanting and his father would punish him would trap him in a, trap him in a room would not give him food for 3 days would tie him upside down and and he would uh, he would try to drown him in a, a well so much so at the end he tied his own son son dayo by the neck and bullock cart and and dayo died by keeping bhagwan swaminarayan's name on his mouth and just for the baksh he did not let go of his kanti he did not erase his tilak channel this is the kind of baksh one needs to keep in order to please bhagwan swaminarayan and at the end when he did die in this way by the hands of his father bhagwan swaminarayan came himself 
and took him to Akshardham. That is his fruits. A 13-year-old boy going to Akshardham, think about how, how strong of a paksh he must have had for Bhagwan. Think about how much affection he must have had for Bhagwan. So, Maharaj is saying, in addition, one should not allow any aversion to develop towards them. That's the main thing. Now we would like to move on to Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami Vato. Swami said, <clears throat> one day, Swami was sleeping. He got up and asked, what is the best of all and what is the worst of all? At that time, nobody spoke. So Swami, he was sleeping at one time, Gunatitanan Swami, in Junagar in the Sabha Mandap. He was just lying down. And he got up and asked, when someone is sleeping, and then they get up and ask something, it must be very, very important. It must be very, very, uh, uh, very, very vital to the people who he is addressing to. So he said, what is the best of all and what is the worst of all? Now, the best of all and worst of all, in what case, in what scenario, what topic, it's a very, very broad question. But Swami's whole thinking was all connected with Bhagwan. So everyone's, no one could answer. So Swami said, the best of all is that we have attained the association of God in, in this sadhu. We have, a, we have attained the association of God in this sadhu, meaning ekantik satpurush. That's the best of all. There is nothing that is better than the company of Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush. Nonetheless, might I add, if one does not know Bhagwan, if one does not have the company of Bhagwan, if one is not that spiritualized to keep Bhagwan in one's life, if one has the company of the Ekantik Satpurush, then automatically one will also join in God. But it is not guaranteed if one is joined in God that one will join in the Ekantik Satpurush. Because one's level is not there. One is not able to speak with Bhagwan, but one is able to speak with the Ekantik Satpurush. One is able to communicate. One is able to develop affection for the Ekantik Satpurush. That's why Swami has said here, the best of all is the company of the God in his Ekantik Satpurush. Through the Ekantik Satpurush, one can become nirvasnik beyond desires, become Brahmarup, and attain Bhagwan's divine abode, Akshardham. The ultimate, ultimate prize, the ultimate, ultimate finishing. That's why Swami has said that this is the best of all. There is nothing better than this and there is nothing better to understand than this. Meaning it's the top, it's the paramount, it's the supreme, it's superior. There is nothing better. And what is the worst of all? that one attributes human traits to this sadhu. There is nothing worse than this, meaning to perceive flaws in the sadhu, per to see negative qualities in the sadhu, that this sadhu sleeps a lot, this sadhu eats a lot, this sadhu talks a lot, this sadhu is like this, this, to the Ekantik Satpurush. Observing the Ekantik Satpurush's kriya or action and analyzing it and calculating with one's intelligence is a big, big felony. It's a very, very big crime. It's a very, very big, you can say, bankruptcy. It's the biggest bankruptcy in satsang. If one was not able to observe, you can say, a little bit of dharamniyam, if one does not have vairagya or gnan, if one may not have bhakti, that's okay. That can be all fixed. But to take negative traits of the Akantik Satapurush is kind of like chopping off one's head. There is no way of living. If our hand is chopped off, we can live. If our leg is chopped off, we can live. If our ear is chopped off, we can live. But if our head is chopped off, completely separated from the body, there is no way of living. It's, it's, there's no surgery for that. 
no matter if you call the best doctors in the world, it's not possible. In the same way, to take negative or to see and think negatively towards the Akantik Satpurush or Sadhus or Bhaktos, anyone in Satsang, is a very, very big fel felony in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And then on the other side, Swami asks, what is the worst of all? As Swami said, to attributes of human that one attributes human traits in this sadhu there is nothing worse than this and how does this attribution of human traits arise so what is the reason that one perceives negative thoughts for the Akandik Satpurush it is due to the desires for the worldly possessions number one worldly possessions may be May it be good food, may it be nice clothing, may it be anything worldly. Due to that, when the Akantak Satpuru says, Oh, it seems like you like eating very, very tasty food. And if one is attached more to that tasty food than the Akantak Satpurush, due to that, one cannot see the Akantak Satpurush's vision. And due to that, one attributes flaws in the Akantak Satpurush. Number one, worldly possessions. Number two, worldly enjoyments of the world. Number three, selfish body interest. Selfish body interest may be our body, taking care of our body, sleeping on a nice uh, uh, bed, and may the Satpurush condemn us and say that you should sleep on the floor, things like that. Things that will, uh, taking very, very hot showers, for example. All these are condemning all, all these are kind of uh, giving the body more and more strength one is becoming more and more one with the body instead of separating from the body in realizing oneself to be uh, the atma and last is bias biasness meaning taking the side the satpurush taking the side of one devotee and not my side that is the worst of all of these, the extent to which the jiva is maligned by bias does not happen even by the enjoyment of the sense pleasures, meaning it is the worst of all. Due to such bias, due to such bias, those who have maligned us uh, senior sadhu have been consigned to the realm of ghosts. And if there is someone like this, he too will go there. As a result of this sin, he suffers miseries such as having to eat feces and drink urine. He suffers such misery, but does not get any happiness at all anywhere. This is the extent. He does not get any happiness anywhere. And it is the worst because one has developed a negative flaw for Bhagwan or for Bhagwan Zekandik Satpurush, Santo and Bhakto. So this is a red light this is a stop sign, this is a danger zone, this is a death zone for any devotee. May that devotee be a kantik, may that devotee be the best of the best. If one falls into this trap, one will never be able to get out. That's why stay very, very alert. Keep the loyalty and paksh of Bhagwan is a kantik, satpurush, santo and bhakto but never take flaws of them ever. Now moving on, there are two charitras and all of you devotees uh, okay, will be able to find these charitras uh, in the PDF that is provided in all Luedam Parivar groups. But these charitras give a very, very keen perspective of how Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us devotees to keep Paksh. And one is of Jagru Bharat and Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami and how Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami was accused of something he did not do and how Jagru Bharat kept very very strong Paksh for Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami. And the second one, second Charitra is of Udev Kodba of Vishnagar and and how she kept Paksh as a female devotee in that time 
for Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So these are the two charitras for our course that you will be able to find in the PDF. But the main thing, dear Bhaktos, is to keep Baksha Bhagwan Swami Narayan, his Ekandik Satpurush, Arpuja Guruji, our Divine Guru Parampara and Santo and Bhakto is the best of all. There can be nothing else. And even by keeping the Paksh, Sadguru Gunatetanan Swami says in his Vato, if one keeps the Paksh of the Nikantik Satpurush, one will go to Akshardham in one or two lives. It's Swami's words. They can never go wrong. But that's how powerful this element of Paksh is. And as Loedam Parivar Bhaktos, we should definitely keep Paksh no matter what happens, no matter what kind of situations arise, no matter what happens but for us it's only one Maharaj one Guruji and one Loya Parivar. saying this my humble Jai Swaminarayan